listeners to another great evening of Max Living Radio, Dallas Fort Worth. This is Dr. Rick Royston and a very special guest tonight in studio, Dr. Chris Cordick. As always. As always. Um, tonight we actually have a cancer survivor in studio. And so we thought this would just be a, a good opportunity to actually share Dr. Chris's story about what he's been through over the last 10 years. He just has a 10 year anniversary of, of being cancer free and clear from that. And um, it's just such a powerful story of how you can change your DNA, your destiny, and, and change your life. And so we thought this would be a great opportunity just to share with people so you can hear what he's been through, but what he's done, and, and the mindset that it takes, how his nutrition, exercise, chiropractic adjustments, how those five essentials actually fit into changing your health and your life and and even just how you know things that he's done or that we've done uh, to you know together to to be able to see our health change and hopefully give you some tips and also encouragement you know if if you're sitting there and, and you really believe that man this is this is it I've lost hope I don't think that I can get better I don't think my life can be different I don't think I can feel better or get off a of medication or reverse a disease you know we want to speak to you right now that there is hope that that God designed you with an amazing capacity to heal to be well and to be healthy and so we want to share that hope with you today be able to encourage you and inspire you and empower you with the truth that you have the greatest doctor in the entire world inside of you amen and then also the healing process looks different for everybody yeah you know I, I know sometimes dr. Chris like sharing your story sometimes people are a little surprised that kind of the route you've, you Absolutely. took or, or even what you do now yeah. and they look at and see those things kind of in contrast and, and so we can't sit there and say that you know what every single person has to do A, B, C, D through Z mm -hmm. it's different for each person and you know what sometimes people feel convicted to do certain things and then other people you know they may feel convicted to not do certain things yeah. like that's between you and God our, our, cho our job isn't to say hey you have to do this this and this it's to open up your eyes to the truth of how to take care of your health how to build health over time and not be focused on just treating a disease there may be times where yes in that instant you've got to treat the disease you got to go after that hardcore and do what you got to do but long term over time you have to focus on being healthy and I think this is going to be critical for people to heal because or to hear is sometimes Dr. Chris especially with cancer you get people they get diagnosed and they immediately think okay I'm gonna go you know I'm doing chemo and radiation yep. and those things and, they, and because I'm doing that too though I can't do these other things like I can't be adjusted I can't mm -hmm. change how I eat I can't mm -hmm. exercise they think that there's separate realms when you know what? You still have to focus on your health long term. Yeah. So I, I guess um, I, I don't even know quite how to start this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But well, what you, you so what started. I would say is too is like you know as we really started talking about cancer day and I share you share with you guys my story. You know what I, what I always want people to understand is every cancer is different. Meaning, so I had testicular cancer. That's different from breast cancer, obviously. That's different yeah. from pancreatic cancer, lung cancer, brain cancer. You know, every cancer and every different gland or organ that you could have it has different outcomes. Right. And, and not every treatment works for every single cancer, right? So, you know, with testicular cancer, it's got the highest survival rate for, uh, like, if you do traditional medicine. So if you do surgery and chemotherapy and those kind of things, it's got the highest survival rate compared to, you know, breast cancer, brain cancer, pancreatic cancer, prostate. Some of those other right. cancers don't have such a high survival rate. But the reality is, is that a lot of times people, when you get diagnosed, you're going to, you're in fear. Right. I mean, this is scary when you when someone, when you have a doctor come up to you and say that's cancer. So this is what happened to me. I was 25 years old. Um, I'm 36 right now, so full disclosure for everybody. So it's been just over 10 years. Um, but at 25 years old, I had a little bit of swelling in my testicle. And like a guy, I just think, well, it's going to go away, right? And I had a little Jack Russell Terrier at the time, and he would jump on me. Um, and I thought he just jumped on it and swelled up because I felt great. Like I was working out. I had just started chiropractic school. Uh, I was under more stress than I'd ever been in my entire life. I had moved away from my family. Um, you know, there's a lot of things happening in my life that were different. School was harder than anything else I'd ever done in my life. Um, so, so I, uh, I went to the doctor and then uh, I went to my primary care. So everybody knows you kind of start one place and then you go to another place and another place and another right. place, scan yeah. after scan after scan, test after test after test. But I start with my primary care. Um, he looks at it. He goes, I don't know. That that could just be some swelling, some epididymitis in there. Uh, he's like, go ahead and see a, a urologist to get an ultrasound to make sure. So a couple days later, I go see a urologist. He does an ultrasound on it and he goes, um, son, that's cancer. 
I mean, it was the most nonchalant thing wow. I'd ever heard. I'm 25 years old at the time. I thought it was sitting in a room by yourself. Sitting too, in a right? room by myself. There's no family around. You know, they're all four hours away in Oklahoma, and I'm, you know, I'm like, oh my gosh, you've got to be kidding me. Um, and so he says, yeah, that's cancer. Um, now we need to stage it, right? And so you're going to need to remove this. So we're going to need to do surgery. Um, so then they go in, and uh, you know, I start talking to my family, and realize too that my family is very medically oriented. At least one side of the family is very medically oriented. The other side of the family is very holistic. You guys ever know what I'm talking about here? There can, <laughs> so that is not the perfect storm if you're diagnosed with cancer because you have some people in the family saying, okay, you need to do alternative things and other people saying you have to do chemo, you have to do radiation and surgery or you're going to die. You know, and it's like... I, you know, I really didn't have a strong opinion. I want you guys to realize this too: is that you know, if you've heard us talk over the years, like this is this is us talking. This is me talking ten years later. You know, this is when I was diagnosed. I knew nothing about health. I mean, Dr. Rick, I was I was just starting chiro. I wasn't even in the chiropractic school program yet. I was still in the undergrad program to get in there. So. Um, you know, this was, I knew a little bit, I knew enough to ask questions, but I had no certainty in anything. So I was still like a lot of people are. They're just, they're open to whatever your doctor says to do, you do. And so, so I just did it. You know, I, I had surgery. Um, and then after the surgery, they said, okay, this is stage three. Um, it's spread to, it's called embroinal cell carcinoma is what it was. Um, so if you think of like Lance Armstrong, he had, uh, I forget which one his was, but his move to the brain. Mm -hmm. Uh, mine had not moved to the brain. It had moved into my uh, my lymph nodes and my pelvic cavity, my lymph nodes in my neck, and it was in both my lungs. So now they're saying, okay, now we got to start you on chemotherapy immediately. And by the way, if you've ever been through this, they don't want to start chemo in two two weeks, in two months. They want to start chemo like tomorrow. Right. Um, so I said, okay, so we're gonna. So I started chemotherapy. You know, all this. So I went through that for four months of my life, and. It, it was no different than anything. You know, I lost all my hair, didn't feel good. Uh, just, you know, that was the only point in my entire life where I stopped working out. Like I just, I stopped working out. I didn't have the energy to um, for, you know, about a, probably a six month period of my life because I was healing from the surgery. Then I underwent chemotherapy. And so really after all that, you're like six months later, and I'm just gonna fast forward and make this quick here. So six months later, they say, okay, now you're cancer free, okay? I'm, I'm in the worst health of my entire life at this point. Wow. You know what I mean? I mean, yeah. six months of chemo, surgery, I had actually gained weight because of all the steroids. I was puffy. I hadn't worked out. I'd been eating like crap. I just, I, you know, everything tasted different. Water tasted like metal because of the chemotherapy. Mm. You know, I, I couldn't hydrate myself hardly. I just had no energy. I was nauseous. I had headaches, you know, all these different things. I felt like I had neuropathy in my hands. I had numbness and tingling. Um, so these are all things post chemo and this is when to them I'm healed all right but to me I'm like oh my gosh this is I feel the worst right now like what does life look like here forward and I think this is the big point I want to get into today is that you know if you've ever been diagnosed with a sickness or a disease or something like that just because like in this in this instance where they say you're cancer free that doesn't mean it's not gonna come back you know, you got to figure out what am I going to do to prevent this? And here's here's the kind of questions you also have, Dr. Rick, is you say, how this happened? Right. How did it happen? Was it was it something to God do this to me? Did did I did I do this to me? Was this bad karma? Like, was this genetics? Was this just I was no matter what I was going to be diagnosed with cancer at some point? Like, how did this happen? And so, through a lot of studies and different things after this, I started realizing it's. It's epigenetics, right? It's you're turning genes on or you're turning genes off, but that all depends on your lifestyle. Yeah. And I was living hard from 18 to 25. I was not living the life that I've led from 25 to 36. You know, that was a completely different lifestyle that I was in. Um, and the stress levels were there. You know, there's a lot of things, the underlying past in my, in my past and my childhood and things that I think can come to fruition in a situation like this. Um, and so you just wonder, like, how did this happen? But I realized it was... It was me that did it, right? It was it was my lifestyle choices. And so, but that brought me great joy because now I'm like, okay, if I can change my life from this point on, guess what I can do? I can start preventing cancer cells from growing because now I can start to starve them out because I understand that if I'm just feeding sugar in my system all day, that's going to promote cancer cells. If I'm lacking oxygen in my system, if I'm stressed and unforgiving and all these other things and holding grudges and these kind of things, like I'm creating an environment in my body that's never going to heal right. You know, so I had to start going down that path of like, what are the changes that I'm going to make? Yeah. And I think, you know, a couple of things you said are so important and key for people to realize and, and just kind of take notice of is that, you know, being sick 
Like your body was developing disease and sick for years, even though you looked fit, yeah. you felt good, you yeah. were healthy. It was developing, and then you get diagnosed, and then then you really start to feel how sick your body yeah, is, and, absolutely. And, and you notice that. And then as soon as they tell you you're cancer free, what happens is so many people think, okay, now that's it. I'm good. I'm golden. Absolutely. This chemo, the radiation, the surgery, whatever it is you did, that that worked. Even even if you went naturally, if you had did it all natural. Mm-hmm. And had not done any of that. Still, at that moment, what happens is typically people go, oh, "I'm cancer free." Yep, and go back and, to and old you lifestyle. go to your old lifestyle. That's why we have so many problems. And I don't care if you're talking about cancer or, or diabetes or even headaches or yep. whatever it is. Yeah. Like you can't stop doing the right things to take care of your health. You go back to the old lifestyle. You are waiting for it to come back. And I think, I mean, you know, I think a good question would be right now: like, do you live in fear? thinking, oh, wow, I'm just waiting to get cancer again. Yeah. So, I mean, I think the quick answer to this is no. I mean, I'd be lying if I said there wasn't a little bit right. of fear left, like I'm human. Right. You know, and I realized at 25 that I'm not invincible. Mm-hmm. I feel like I'm in a whole, a lot better state. You know, I will say this, that, um, you know, when I was 25, this is when I gave my life to the Lord. This is when I, my whole life started to change. I realized, okay, I can't live in fear the rest of my life yeah. that this is going to happen again. So if I'm not going to live in fear, i got to live in faith. You know, so yeah. I live in faith with the Lord that every day I I have you know it's a special day you know this is another thing for people that have had cancer and survived cancer I mean my outlook on life has changed you know every single day is a blessing like I'm, I'm excited to be here I'm excited to be alive I realize how important every day is comparatively to some people who just may take it for granted you know because right. 20 there's a moment at 25 where you think am I going to pull through this, you know, or, and that was a brief moment. I always had the mindset that I'm I, almost like, I'm glad this happened to me because I can take this. I can do yeah. this. I can, you know, I'll, I'll take this on and, and it'll be fine. Um, but what was the, what was the first question you asked me? Well, I think just fear. You fear. Know, cause, yeah, yeah. Cause I think a lot of people do, they get diagnosed and then, you know, it goes away, but then, or, you know, it's gone. And then you have this mindset. I just go back to my old lifestyle. But That's then, huge. Yeah. But then I think there's, there should be this healthy, and I don't, I don't like to work, use the word fear, but but a healthy understanding that, you know, you have to have a little bit yeah. of that edge, like, yeah. oh, this is possible, it's going to yeah. come back, to keep you doing the right things. If you just totally ignore that, then you don't do anything. But then also, fear paralyzes people, so you go the exact opposite way, and it's like you're living in fear every day, like just waiting on the diagnosis to because, get cancer again. Yeah. yeah, because that means that, okay, it doesn't matter what I do, if I start doing all the things that I'm about to talk to you guys about, if we, if I do all those things, it doesn't matter. It's all a waste of time because it's still going to happen to me again. Like, you have to be out of that mindset. The first thing I realized is the lifestyle choices that I had made my whole life leading up to that point, they contributed to this happening. Yeah. There's just no, I'm not, I'm not trying to hurt your feelings. I'm saying this about me. This is true that those choices dictated what happened to me at 25 years and, old. And not at 18 to 25. Because, you whole, know, Dr. Chris said, you know, I lived hard that 18 to 25. But as a child, yeah. you know, when we eat poorly or we feed our kids poor food or they're just sitting there playing Xbox all day and they don't go outside and play and, and we're full of toxins and all of those things, you have to realize like there is an accumulation of that over time and now, you know, we've got these numbers, excessive numbers of kids being diagnosed with cancer and heart disease and diabetes and all these things and we have to realize that what we're seeing as like Take, you know, taking care of our kids, you know, trying to get them to be happy or to, trying to get them to do what we want them to do with food and treats and all these things. Like, all we're doing is creating a toxic environment where down the road, they're more likely to get cancer. So, I, you know, I want to use that as a wake-up call, not to say we're bad parents. A lot of people don't realize the problem with that. Yep. But you have to know that, you know, nobody wants to be stuck at home and get a call from their son and he's 25 years old, sitting in a doctor's office by himself, getting told that he has cancer. Like, like th- that that makes me sick thinking about if my son had to go through that. Yeah. And like to know that like I was contributing to that, and you know, and that's how I view it now. Like yeah. I look at how I raise my kids. Is like, am I doing something to help them be healthy, or am I doing something that may contribute to them having to sit there and get told that they have that? Mm-hmm. You know. And now again, we can't eliminate everything. Don't get us wrong. We're not saying that you know just because you follow these healthy rules that you're going to be disease-free yeah. for the rest of your life. We're just saying, let's minimize as many risks as possible. Let's try to get rid of some of these things that we know can cause cancer, can cause heart disease, can cause diabetes yeah. and those things. Like, just you know, start somewhere. It's huge because that puts you in the driver's seat. Like, nobody wants to just sit back and think, 
it's going to happen to me no matter what. So I'm going to put myself in the driver's seat and I said, I'm going to start changing my life. I'm going to start changing the things that I do. So now at 25 years old, cancer free, okay, now I'm not going to go back to living the same life I was living before because obviously those contributed to the fact that I had cancer. So if I change and I start eating better, I start exercising differently, I start following different nutritional protocols and different you know things that will fight cancer cells, then I'm going to have less of a risk of getting it in the future. Yeah. There's yeah. just, I mean, and that's the same thing as like, you know, when we sit back and we say, I hope there's a you know, cure for cancer, right? I do too, but at the same time, it's a multifactorial thing. There's not just one thing that we can say, take this pill and you're not going to get cancer. Right. Right, because that doesn't take the flame retardants out of your mattress. But we've never been able to do that with any other disease. Yeah. So to think that that's realistic about cancer when you're spending so much money on fighting disease instead of teaching people how to be healthy is just ludicrous. It, it is. And, but I think the mindset of people is like, okay, well, if we can just put enough money and investments into this, we'll find a cure so I can just sit back and hopefully there's going to be a cure at some point if I ever get diagnosed. Like, I, I'm with you. I hope that could happen, but I just don't don't think it can because it's such a multifactorial disease. There's there's so many toxins coming at us from every single different direction and stresses and emotional traumas and subluxations to the spine affecting the nervous system and healing and there's all of these different things. So you have to figure out, you know, what what are the causes of it? What can I do to prevent these things? You know, so some of the first things that that I did was exercise. You know, I'd already exercised, but I said, okay, now I'm learning about high intensity burst training exercises because I got to figure out how to flood my body with oxygen. Right. So I wanted to do more high intensity reps. So I would do things where um, I would exercise for 20 seconds on, 20 seconds off, or or a minute on, a minute off, something like that where I could really flood oxygen and testosterone and growth hormone into my body and lower cortisol, lower that stress hormone and not put myself in this catabolic state of exercise where you know I'm running long distances and those kind of things which are stimulating more stress hormones. So I started exercising that way. Um, food is a humongous one. You know, I'll tell you right now, if I were to be diagnosed with cancer again or if I know somebody that's diagnosed with cancer, one of the first things I would tell them to do is go raw. I mean like raw vegan for about 90 days. I, I do not think you should go raw vegan vegan for the rest of your life, um, but for a healing protocol, you know, go raw vegan for 90 days. I mean, juicing four or five, ten times a day, just loading your body with nutrients is so important. So at that point, though, you know, I wasn't at that level. I was still eating fast food. I was still drinking sodas. You know, I was I was doing those kind of things. So the first thing I realized is, okay, I learned that sugar feeds cancer. Okay, sugar feeds cancer. So, so did your medical doctor, your oncologist tell you that? No, I actually asked him about that, and he said no. He told me, no, it does not matter. He goes, you can drink alcohol, you can keep eating whatever you want. You know, I mean, it would literally, uh, we would be getting chemo on Fridays, and the nurses would bring us in donuts. I'm not kidding. So I, I would be sitting in a recliner getting the chemo, and the nurses would bring in donuts around. We'd be eating donuts. I would have my cherry limeade that I picked up you know, from Sonic, my Route 44 cherry limeade or vanilla Dr. Pepper or something like that. I'm drinking that, eating donuts while I'm getting chemotherapy. Wow. You know, And knowing what I know now, I'm like, oh my gosh, those totally are counterproductive, right? Because all of that stuff is feeding cancer cells in my body while I'm trying to get rid of them. So you have to realize that those kind of choices, they make a huge huge difference um so food that was the first thing so i knew that i had to get rid of sugar so the first thing i did was i said no more soda right and then after that after months passed and i was like okay i'm done with the sodas now i'm gonna no more fast food okay and my first step my first thought was like no more mcdonald's i'll do subway (laughs) right because that's gonna be healthier so i stopped mcdonald's i started doing subway but then i realized okay sodium nitrites and that meat is causing cancer too and processed deli meat so i'm like okay i can't do Subway anymore. Um, so then I stopped fast food. Then I start um, realizing this is the one thing I did not want to give up was bread. I was so against this. I was like, there's no way bread could be making me sick. That yeah. pasta, that rice, that these things could really be bad for me. Mm-hmm. Um, but you just have to realize, I mean, the gluten content in those things is totally devastating to the gut, which is your immune system. Um, they are highly inflammatory, and they increase your sugar. They increase insulin resistance. So this is huge. you got to get rid of those kind of things. And so then I started switching to um, more of an organic, non-GMO type of diet. You know, and, and what I want you guys to realize out of this is this didn't like this is a 10-year process. Okay, this wasn't like day one I started going through all these. These were kind of the levels and steps that I made. And then about five years in, I said, okay, well, I'm watching a lot of videos on how you know these the meat can cause cancer growth and stimulate these kind of things. And so I said, okay, I'm going to become a vegetarian. So in the last five years, I've been a vegetarian. Um, and there's there's ways to make vegetarian 
vegetarianism work and there's ways to make it not work. Yeah, okay. it can be unhealthy. It can because you can be a vegetarian and eat cheese, pizza, and donuts all day long. Yeah. Right? You know, so that's not always the best opportunity, but if you can do it the right way, I think it I think it can work for some people. Um you know, is there anything you want to add on the food? Well, I, I think you know, just reiterating what you said, like you started out with just cutting out sodas, and then you're like, okay, now I'm going to stop fast food, and that was in layers, and then yeah. and then you go to eating more organic type diet, and then cutting out meat, and so you know, I just think it's so important to realize like health happens in steps, very rarely, because too many people want to start all over tomorrow. You know, it's like, oh, I clean up my pantry, I'm exercising every day, I'm eating perfect clean, and then you start messing up. And then you fall back into old habits. It's it's okay to mess up. That's part of it. But you just get up every day, and you have this this mindset of, I'm going to win at this. I'm going to be victorious at this, and I and I have a reason of why I'm doing this. Mm -hmm. I want to be healthy, and I want to be alive, and I want to be able to have kids and 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 raise them. And so having that mindset, I think, is the the first step into actually making these changes. So when you're looking at deciding whatever you want to do, whether it's cut out sodas or stop eating bread or meat, whatever it is, like come up with a reason of why. Do you want to be healthy? Do you want to be well? Do you want to honor God? You know, we had a lady that she was doing um, a fast for with her church, and she cut out sodas for 21 days. And then afterwards, her husband asked her, are you going to start drinking sodas again? And she said, you know what? I actually feel like God brought me through this without headaches and withdrawals and all mm -hmm. these problems. He goes, I really think it would be um, really just a dishonor and disservice to God to go back to drinking those. Yeah. So realize like our bodies are a temple and the Holy Spirit resides there and that you know it's a gift that God's given to us and what we do with that is our gift back to him. So in these moments where you're making those choices of like am I going to eat the bread or not or am I going to drink this soda or not, realize like God wants you to have a healthy body, and He's giving you a way to take care of that and honor Him by making those good choices. Now, don't feel guilty, and you know, once you mess up, but then just be able to start again and get back on the proverbial wagon and go forward. I think is key. Yeah, and so, and I want to make sure that we have time for this because this is really one of the most important parts of the story. Is that um, you know, so when you have testicular cancer, they will they go through, and before I even had the surgery, um, they said, well, you need to go bank your sperm because we're not sure if you're ever going to be able to have kids, and then you go through all the chemotherapy and that's super hard on your reproductive system so it gets to the point where they're like we don't know that you'll ever be able to have kids mm -hmm. and so my wife and I uh, we weren't married at the time we were about to get married and so 26 7 you know we we get married um, you know we're trying to we start trying to have kids it's two or three years past all the chemo everything like that I've been doing what I could to detox I started you know changing the way I exercise changing my nutrition you know like I was going through with you guys so I'm changing all this stuff, but we're still not able to get pregnant. You know, we're trying to get pregnant. At this point, I'm getting out of chiropractic school, and I get put into my mentor's office, and I'm explaining to him what's going on, and, and he starts telling me, he's like, okay, well, you know, you've got a lot of damage to your nervous system down here in the bottom part of your spine. And so, you know, really, it all started clicking in this moment that the nerves that are in the bottom part of my spine, where I had this scoliotic angle, I had all these subluxation patterns in the bottom part that are crushing the nerves that feed my reproductive system. So now all of a sudden, he's like, okay, so we've got to start, a, we've got to start addressing this. We've got to start adjusting this part of your spine so your body can properly heal from the inside out. Um, so I started getting adjusted. I was getting adjusted for eight months, eight months, and I was getting adjusted three or four times a week. So, you know, here's the thing, Dr. Rick, is a lot of people say, I've got adjusted it didn't work right and I'm like how many times you get adjusted I got adjusted once every two months <laughs> yeah it's like okay you work out once every two months if you did did you get any results did it not yeah. work either yeah. okay there's a reason that it didn't work is because you didn't have enough repetition behind it I'm not saying everyone in here or everyone listening needs to get adjusted three or four times a week for eight months but that's what I needed yeah I had been through chemo I had been through surgery I had cancer I had still cancer cells in my body even if they couldn't find them they were in there right yeah. you know they still are it's a matter of if they're coming to fruition or not. And so, so I was getting it just on the eighth month, my wife got pregnant naturally. When all the doctors told us that it wasn't going to be possible, we were able to have a, a natural birth, a natural you know, process. We didn't have to use in vitro. We didn't have to use the bank sperm. We didn't have to use any of that because it was my body healing the way God intended for wow. it to from above, down, inside out. This is what we tell you guys every single night on the show. And we know this firsthand. I'm the firsthand you know, testimony of this that when doctors tell you something can't happen, go somewhere else. Yeah. Find somewhere else that will make it happen for you. 
<laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I, that's so powerful. And, and just what a testimony that, you know, you held true. Because what happens is people want to give up. You know, they're like, okay, you're, well, you said it didn't work. So they immediately go and get the sperm out of the bank and start going, hey, let's go down this process. And, and, and is that faith over fear? You know, knowing that God can do an amazing miracle inside of your body where doctors and man have have taken that away and they've separated it and they go okay you've got your body and you've got this spiritual component over here not really realizing you can't separate those and and when god promises something that never returns void that his word is 100 mm-hmm. percent true and his word it, it, you know you can't, you can't take that back yeah and um and it's just so powerful to see you now you know, and, and knowing, you know, and I've been a, a part of a lot of that, not in the beginning, but I've known you for a long time and, and watched the transformation and the amazing marriage you have and the amazing kids that you have and, and your thriving practice and how much your patients love you and, and how much healing happens there and and what you've been through to get there and, and to know that, you know what, God has a plan for each and every one of you, mm-hmm. that, that whether you've been diagnosed with a sickness or a disease, whether you have a pain or something, you know what, God still has a plan for you, and he wants to walk you through that. And, and a lot of times you'll hear me say this too, we go through things so that God can use those to help other people. Yeah. And what you've been through is such a testimony to help other people walk through that and get healthy. And so listening right now, like this is for you. I know we've talked about cancer tonight, but it's not just about cancer. This is about your life.